What's going on everyone? Sunday night, let's do a chart session. Getting ready for this week in the market. I'm gonna go over uh, a few charts, what's going on with earnings this week, and uh, let's see what we're gonna do. Now, before we get into that, uh, I wanna show you what I'm looking at for this week. So, this is from my Substack post yesterday. This is the list of earnings releases this week. Now, typically all the tech names are in the same week. This time they're not, so it's spread out over two weeks. But this week what we're looking at, some of the big names. You got Verizon, you got Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, you have 3M, you have Microsoft, you have Boeing, you have ASML. This is a huge semi company, right? You've got Tesla, you've got ServiceNow, IBM, Lam Research, you've got MasterCard, American Airlines Southwest, Intel Visa, Chevron, American Express. We're going to find out a lot about the consumer this week. Now, the thing is, earnings are tough because they're going to throw off the whole market, okay? Like Microsoft here. This is a huge component of the S&P and the NASDAQ, and whether you're long Microsoft or you're not, you're long the stock because... Whatever it does this week, you're going to feel it in your portfolio. If Microsoft dips 10%, you're going to get a hit to your portfolio when the S&P declines. So we have to wait for all these companies to report over the next two weeks before we're going to get a direction in the market. So my suggestion for this week is, like, like I told the people in my Substack, for the sake of not gambling, I don't think the next two weeks are time to put on new trades. So if you're long things, you know, sell some covered calls. If you're worried, if you're not worried, let it ride. If you have puts, you know, you got to watch out. Um, but this isn't really the time to put on new trades because we really don't know what's going to happen for starters. And two, we're right here on the SPY, okay? The SPY is just, it has spent so much time grappling with this downtrend. I mean, look at all these touches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? This is our seventh touch. Maybe seventh time's a charm. I do not know. What I do know is the RSI is still not confirming anything. What I know is we put in an ugly hammer candle last week, even though it's over all the moving averages. And I know we're still stuck under this wedge and this downtrend. So I'm not going to say we're bullish yet. Um, I just tweeted out a chart of the VIX, and the VIX has been down 15 out of 17 weeks. I mean, there is zero fear in this market. People are not worried. Uh, everybody's in the camp that we're going to pivot, and it's going to be quick, and it's going to be seamless, and stocks are going to go to the moon. But I'll tell you something. Historically, when we've pivoted, it's about six months later where stocks bottom. So you guys can... Say what you want, do what you want. Stocks have performed great. I mean, could we rip a little higher and maybe give the bears one last panic? Maybe, right? Like we might squeeze up 410, 420 or something and then flush lower. That's very possible, right? One last move to get the bears out. Um, in, in other past bear markets that has happened, the trend line has broken and then reversed lower. But uh, I'm sticking to my conviction and I'm holding my put spread long, uh, and I do believe by the end of the quarter, we will be below 390 on the SPY. And I do think by summer, we will be below 390 on the SPY as well by the June quarter. So that's what I'm doing. Obviously, I have a ton of short puts. I, and I described that in my last video where I described, you know, how I'm kind of neutral at the moment. But I, I, I just, I, I don't get what the market's doing right now. And this is why I tell you, like, stocks and the economy, they don't go together, even though people think they do. But stocks are, are doing their own thing here, and they're calling the Fed's bluff. I mean, the Fed's done everything it could to kill the stock market, and it's just not working. So with that in mind, let's look at Microsoft, okay? So this is reporting this week, and this has already had Satya Nadella say the next two years are rough. So he's already kind of like pre-announced, right? So I think what you're going to see with Microsoft, I think you're going to see pretty weak numbers. Um, Microsoft got its first downgrade last week. It has had a downgrade in forever. I mean, who who downgrades Microsoft, right? 
it's sitting at the 200 weekly DMA, which should be pretty strong support, right? It should be. It hasn't really broken it yet. A lot of other names have. And it, it's just peeking its head over this big trend line it's had for the last year. If Microsoft explodes higher, I wouldn't be shocked. And if it explodes lower, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, either way, Microsoft is a great company and paying $240, you're not gonna be hurt long-term holding it at that price. Short-term, I, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, uh, I know they're gonna have all sorts of issues with enterprise customers. I know they're gonna have all sorts of issues with PC sales, currency. There's gonna be all sorts of issues, but I do still think Sachin Nadella is the best CEO uh, in the world. And I do think Microsoft is probably up there with Amazon and Google as you know your three-headed monster of the three most important companies of tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I left Apple out on purpose because I don't really I don't really care much for Apple. But um, Microsoft is it's in a spot where you're not going to get hurt going long, but you just got to be careful in the earnings. You never know. I mean, look at look look at what it's doing here. It it just doesn't have strength. If I had strength, it would be over all these moving averages and it's just not there. So let's get that one out of the way. Let's look at J&J, &J, right? Defensive leader, pharmaceutical name. Now, this thing's just been in this smooth uptrend for the longest time. Now, if we zoom in, you can see here that this thing's looking pretty hideous, right? This, this chart looks busted. Now, I'm not expecting anything crazy out of Johnson & Johnson, but what you're seeing here is the MACD on the weekly. It's turned down. It doesn't look good, right? This looks like it's about to flip negative. When it flips negative, you can see here, it just went through this sharp downturn. It took a couple months. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this is a defensive name. 168 is not a horrible price, but I do think, just looking at this chart, it looks like it wants to come down and test this 157, 60 level. So I, I don't know. If you want to sell puts here, it's probably a solid spot to... Uh, sell puts on the name, right? This doesn't look, uh, you're, you're, you're not going to get hurt owning this stock at 157. This is a very strong defensive name. All right. Now let's look at MasterCard. They also report this week. And what you're going to see with MasterCard is this is a really strong chart, right? Like you pull this up. I mean, this thing is over all the moving averages. It's basically back almost near highs. Right? Like you can see, it's back near, you know, highs. And this is a very strong chart. I mean, they've been buying this thing really hard for the last, I don't know, four months. And the RSI has turned up. And look, these credit card companies, remember a year ago we were talking about, you know, which of these fintechs was going to replace them. That was never going to happen. And now, look, these credit card companies, they're the winners of inflation. Like people talk about who are the winners of inflation. Well, it's the credit card companies because... The more items go up in price, the more they get in fees. Now, on the other side, you could say, well, people will shop less and people do that. People still have to buy groceries. People still have to fill their car with gas. They still have to do all these things. And the higher prices go, the more incremental fees MasterCard, Visa, and all of them are going to take in. And so you look at over here, you look at Visa, and Visa has a similar chart, right? So all these credit card companies... They're, they're looking really, really strong. Now, how would I play them? I would look at lows and I would try to sell puts there maybe six months, a year out and just see if you can get shares at the lows. But these all look very good and it wouldn't shock me if they went higher. But you know what? These companies have been in these ranges for so long. I mean, look at Visa. I mean, you're talking this thing's been in this range since November 2021. If and when this thing breaks out, it's going to be a very, very powerful move. Is it ready now? I don't know. Um, I don't gamble on earnings, but uh, the chart is nice for that and MasterCard. Now, let's look at Tesla because Tesla also reports this week. And I know a lot of the bulls are starting to get excited again about Tesla. But what I'm seeing with Tesla is just simply a dead cat bounce, right? Like everybody talks about, oh, Tesla's up 30% from the lows. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's at 133, it got as low as 101, and that was three weeks ago. But in the scope of things, look at this. It's barely within that huge dump candle that it had five weeks ago. And if you look back even further, and you look at where it was in September, 
And we're seeing still down over 50% since September. I mean, it's strictly a dead cap bounce. It hasn't even gotten to any of these moving averages. And when it does, it's going to reject and go lower. It's not going to just knife through this stuff. And so while I do see a bullish MACD convergence here, while I do see the RSI perking up, I mean, I, I don't know what Tesla's going to report that's going to be so exciting to people, right? Like we know they've cut prices. We know their margins are going to go down. We know everything involved with Tesla at this point, okay? Uh, the stock is never going to go back to these $300 levels for a very, very long time, if ever. I mean, this thing's still half a trillion dollars, even down here. That, that's how absurd this thing is, right? It's like 400 some odd billion dollars. And the reality is the shine has worn off. For one, all those ESG fund managers, they don't want the stock anymore because of Elon's political tirade that he's gone on with Twitter. And then you're seeing people who were Tesla customers canceling orders and moving away from the brand because they don't want to be associated with Elon. And so it's like in this death spiral where they're having to cut prices because demand is gone. Like the demand is gone. And uh, once your reputation's damaged the way Tesla's is because of Elon, it, it, it's just impossible to get it back. And look, these cars haven't been refreshed in forever. The Model S got a little facelift and I, they changed the steering wheel to a yoke, but these aren't meaningful changes, okay? And Tesla's going to have to invest a ton of money to get a new Model S. They're going to have to get a new Model X. That thing is also seven years old. And then the Cybertruck, is that ever going to be released? I don't know. And I'm sure they're going to say all kinds of things during this earnings call because Elon is the master of the pump. But there's just nothing in this chart until we get over like 176 that's worth buying. It's still below the 200 weekly and that's it. So even if it rallies 10%, right, and we go to 150, it's still a meaningless pump in the scope of things. Uh, you want to see it at least you know, start to get over the 200 and then you want to see it start to take back all these candles here. And I'm telling you, it, it, it's just not going to like it, this 314 level Tesla is not going to see that for years. Now, a Momo name service. Now they always report good numbers. And I, I actually, I really like this company. I think Bill McDermott is maybe my favorite CEO in America, if I'm honest. I, I know I say Satya Nadell is the best, but Bill McDermott, I, I said I thought he, he was the right guy for Amazon. I just, I love the guy. Um, he always goes on this PR tour after earnings. Like you're going to see him on CNBC. He's the cool guy with the shades because he had some glass go into his eye. And so um, he, he's just a very cool guy. I like him a lot. And what you're seeing here with ServiceNow is it's also approaching the 200 weekly. Look at this huge base it's putting in, and now it's beginning to curl up. The MACD is turned up. The RSI is turned up. And look, this company always posts great numbers. It's still very, very expensive. It's a very expensive company. But this is a fantastic company with great leadership. And look, if this thing can just peak over 452, look at this, it's it's blue skies above. There's no more moving averages in the way, there's nothing. So if it can just get over this, I mean, it has a clear shot at going, you know, back to highs. Is it gonna do it in a bear market? Probably not. But I'm just saying like, once you can get over all this like resistance, you, you have a shot at clear skies. So with that said, last thing, the IWM still is broken out. You know, I said that last week. I said I didn't even broke out. Look, came back down and tested it, but it's still broken out. So small caps look like the place to be, even though the RSI isn't that bullish. And uh, we'll see. I still stand by my stance that this year is going to be the year of premium selling. And those who sell puts are going to do fantastic. Those who buy premium probably won't do that well overall. And in general, I still think the market's going to be flat or down for the year. If it is up, it will be up, you know, a couple percent or something, like nothing outrageous. And look, we have some landmines in the way, right? I mean, we saw the, the Biden house was raided last night. What happens if the president of the United States resigns or something? What's that going to do to the market? You know, the market's all about, it doesn't like uncertainty. You know, uh, if something happens to the leader of the free world, I, I don't think the market's going to take that positively. Um, you also have Russia promising to uh, escalate the war in Ukraine now. 
And, I mean, you, you just have so many landmines. Look at something like, like gasoline, right? Arbob? Uh, have you guys looked at Arbob? Let's, I don't even look at the symbol on here. Where is it? Arbob. I don't even know which one of these it is on here. I, I don't even really look at Arbob. But gasoline is up 30% in the last, um, in the last month. What is that going to do to CPI next month? What, what, what exactly is that going to do to CPI next month? No, it's not our bump. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is on TOS. Um, I'm not a gasoline trader. But, um, you know, gasoline going up 30% in a month is going to really hit these inflation numbers. And so I don't, I don't, I don't know, you know, but if, if CPI keeps coming in hot, we're going to have to keep these rates higher for longer. We all know they're going to cut at some point, but that some point could be further than anticipated. Everyone's talking about cuts this year. But look, if inflation doesn't calm down, you know, the Fed, their reputation's on the line, and I don't think they're going to do it just to uh, just because everyone thinks they will. So we got to keep an eye on what's going to happen with CPI, but... All these data points coming in from gasoline going up and, and food costs going up, like, th these aren't going to help anything, okay? They're, they're just not. The China reopening, all, all these things do nothing to help inflation. So keep that all in mind. I know it's always priced in. Everything in the market's always priced in. There's nothing that can surprise anyone. But I think people are being far too complacent. You know, when you look at the VIX, this is what I was talking about. You've got basically one green candle since the end of September. I mean, this one, I don't really think you can call it green. And if you say that, that's actually 16 out of 17 weeks, the VIX closed lower than it opened. That is incredible. You know, and if you look at the last year, right, we just had this like series of the VIX gets crushed, it goes up quickly, and then it gets crushed again. And these rallies in the market are just so intense. Like we, we spend no time at lows. Like you come back and you look at the spy, you go back to uh, the first lows in June. We were there for one week and then we rallied hard. We rallied 10% and then we came down all the way. And then we spent one week again at the absolute lows and then we rallied hard again. And like there has not been a point where the market has just like settled at lows and and let people uh, get in. It's always like this like one day event, right? Like you look at you look at the daily chart of the spy. I mean, look at this thing. In in uh, October, look at that. It was one day and we reversed. And uh, over here, it was one day and we reversed higher. And so it's like it, it, it's just incredible. There's just no data point that can come in anymore that has bulls worried. And it's kind of concerning because the data is really bad. It's it's really, really bad. And everyone just keeps saying they're forward looking and we're gonna get through it because we're the US, but you know what? What if we don't? Like, what if we don't? And you, you look at these employment numbers, they're horrible. They are horrible. That's why we're trying to import so many immigrants to the US. Like, our workforce is decimated, whether it's what you wanna believe that, uh, Maybe something like COVID has put a lot of people on long-term disability. I, I don't have an answer for you, but the numbers are horrible. And uh, now you're having all these tech companies lay off workers left and right. Like this is not ideal. And you know what? It's going to hit these tech companies numbers too. Like you don't just lay off 12,000 people and see the same productivity, right? Like you, you just, you don't. And so um, those have to be revised down. And, and, and again, SPX, the numbers on SPX are already down to 225. They keep revising them down. And if we really are in a recession, we're going to miss those numbers and it's gonna come in even lower. And so if we're at 18 times 225 right now, which is where we are, recessions typically bottom at like 13X, right? So if we go down to 225, we get 13X. I mean, you're way lower. You're at like 3000. So I don't know. Right, I'm I'm short a ton of puts at good levels, but I'm also long puts, and we're we're gonna see what happens. But um, I, I'm not looking for anything crazy at this point. I again, I'm up 17% so far in three weeks. I'm not gonna risk it all on what happens in the next two weeks. So I'm cautiously long, but 
I have my puts just in case, just in case the market decides it's not all priced in. All right, so anyways, I hope you guys all have a great day in the market tomorrow and I will see you with my recap after hours.